Already missing their number one goaltender, the Vancouver Canucks headed into Game 7 against the Edmonton Oilers without their leading goal scorer too. The missing goaltender wasn't an issue. The missing goal scorer certainly was, as the Canucks showed off little offensive spark until the final minutes of the game. Brock Besser's absence was felt early, as the Canucks manages two shots on goal in the first period, which is dire for a do-or-die Game 7. More troubling, the Canucks had a four-minute power play near the end of the first, and the only shot and most dangerous chance was for the Oilers on a shorthanded breakaway for Connor Brown. While the power play was struggling with Besser in recent games, it looked entirely toothless without Besser. Philip Ronick took his place on the first power play unit, giving the Canucks a two defensemen, three forward set that looked outdated at a time when teams around the NHL almost exclusively use one defenseman on the PP. Fortunately for the Canucks, rookie goaltender Arthur Silovs brought his A game on Monday night, stopping all 13 shots he faced in the first, including a glorious save on Brett Kulak a couple of minutes in. Seelofs first stopped a hot shot by Dylan Holloway, then stretched across to his right to get his blocker on Kulak's chance on the rebound. Seelofs' heroics kept the score knotted at zeros, heading into the first intermission, but the Nucks' mandate had to be to get more shots in the second. Technically, the Canucks did get more shots in the second period, but only just barely. By the time the Oilers took a 2-0 lead midway through the period, the Canucks had just two more shots on goal. Only then did the Canucks wake up and get some pressure up ice to finish the period with 10 shots. The Oilers' relentless offensive zone pressure paid off with two goals from the right point through traffic in the second period. First, Cody Ceci sent a slap shot top corner over Silas's glove just over a minute into the middle frame. Then Evan Bouchard fired a shot off the post and in on the blocker side. Both times, Seeloff couldn't see the puck past the screen, but they did change the goal from Bouchard over to Hyman. I'll give you the breakdown on that in a minute. Sandwiched in between the goals was one of the best saves of the playoffs. At the tail end of an Oilers power play, Connor McDavid set up Leon Dreisaitl for what looked like an open net, only for Seeloff to reach back with his glove and rob the Oilers' start after his shot deflected off Ian Cole. The Oilers added one more goal in the second, cashing in on the power play. Bouchard's shot from the right side took a lucky deflection to bank off the backboards to Ryan Nugent Hopkins at the back door for an open net. Silas lunged back to the post in desperation, but couldn't turn the shot aside, and the Oilers took a 3-0 lead into the second intermission. The Canucks have been the authors of so many incredible comebacks in this postseason, but they seemed to run out of gas by the third period against the Oil. But then, they ended Stuart Skinner's shutout to ensure this wasn't the third straight Canucks Game 7 without a goal. When Oilers center Ryan McLeod whiffed on a breakout pass, Connor Garland jumped on the loose puck and snapped it under Skinner's blocker to make it 3-1 and give the Rogers Arena faithful some life. And then Roenick scored his first goal of the playoffs, Blasting a point shot past an inadvertent Matthias Ekholm screened to make it 3-2 with 4.36 remaining. Suddenly, a comeback that had seemed impossible looked entirely probable. The crowd became deafening, willing the Canucks on, but as they poured on the pressure in the final minutes, desperate to get the game to overtime, the Canucks couldn't manifest another magical comeback. One last chance by J.T. Miller with 13 seconds left was blocked, ending the comeback, and ending the Canucks season. It was a difficult way for it to end, but it was still a marvelous season with so many amazing moments. As the crowd chanted, See Lofts, See Lofts, See Lofts, the Canucks shook the hands of the Oilers and headed into the offseason. Meanwhile, the Oilers are heading into the semifinals to face the Dallas Stars. The winner of that goes to the Cup to face either the Rangers or the Panthers. I'm not going to give a prediction on the orders just yet, but anyone who's pretty familiar with the channel knows who I'm going to go with and why I'm going to go with them. You know, it's the old bet with the head, not with the heart situation, but sometimes you got to listen to the beat, the beat of the heart, and the beat of the yeah. Oilers. 
So that's going to wrap it up for this video, and this series is finally done. It was a nerve-wracking mother effing thing, to say the least. Six out of the seven games were decided by one goal, and how fitting Game 7 ended with a one-goal margin. Quick breakdown of the game. Score again, 3-2. The closing line was the Oilers at minus 155, over under 5.5. Both very, very close to the line. Again, as usual, the over-under, just by half a goal. Finish to the under. Goal scores. I gave to you in the in the second period was CC Hyman and Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins on the power play as Edmonton finally got a power play goal, and lo and behold, it ends up being the game winner. As in the third period, Garland and Ronick did make it 3-2. It was almost heart attack central once again for any Oiler fan, but they did manage to hang on this time. And again, as I said, we go on to play the stars what do you got who do you say is going to be in the finals let me know in the comment section below if you're new to the channel consider subscribing picks posts press conferences everything and i don't mean goal posts because this time bouchard with the deflection from hyman went off the post but guess what bingo it's in the net and what else is bingo orders in the semifinals take care all we'll see you on the flip side get that cash do you know where you are do you know who i am tell you what this is trending rabbit <laughs>